Now I want to do the Salk Center. Jonas Salk was a young man once. <laughs> He's no longer alive. He was a young man, and there was not a lot of government money in research in the 1940s and 50s. And there was something called the March of Dimes. It was a charity that collected money and to support research for polio. And polio was a real, real horror story. It was uh, every summer there would be a polio academic. The mothers would be freaked out. If your kid, it starts like symptoms of a cold, and and then it, if it turns out it's polio, you could die. You'd be spending the rest of your life on crutches. You might spend the rest of your life in an iron lung. You might have a immobile arm. So it's pretty horrible and it struck kids. Uh, just a digression, the reason why it was an epidemic. My father grew up in the Bronx. He swam in the East River. The point is, polio epidemic started after they started chlorinating water. Because before they chlorinated the water, everybody was exposed to mild forms of polio and had natural resistance. Then they chlorinated the water. All the kids grew up with no resistance when they got hit by it, they got crippled. So they later figured out that's why the epidemic happened in the 1950s, 40s and 50s. So the March of Dimes chose Jonas Salk, a young virologist, and they understood the principle of how to make a vaccine. A vaccine is either a killed or a weakened version of the virus that you would We've all had dozens of vaccines, right? Uh, it's a killed or, and they're for viruses, not for bacteria. Uh, and antibiotics don't help with viruses, and, you, and I, I don't think you can really make vaccines for bacteria. Uh, so they're for viruses. And so you get a killed or, but it's still keeping in shape, or weakened form of the virus, like smallpox, it's weakened, because you do get an infection from smallpox, that's why you get a scar. Um, in, um, here it was killed. And you inject it into the child, and its immune system says, oh, polio virus, send out, you know, create antibodies for defense. And then when you get an infection later, the antibodies are there and clobber. So anyway, he develops this and they did a big test, and everybody's buzz, buzz, buzz. And then it was like 100% of the kids that got the real as opposed to the placebo. Not one of them got polio. Whoa, I was, I was online two blocks long <laughs> as a kid to get the vaccinated at school. I mean, they just, everybody got vaccinated as quick as possible. And he became a hero, scientific hero. So he says, what am I going to do with my position? And he said, I don't like, I don't want to be a university because I don't like teaching. I want to do research. I don't want to be the drug company because you have to do what's going to make them money rather than what you think is most important. So I want my own research institute, and I'm famous enough that I can get the funding, I can do the fundraising. He hears Khan talk, and he says, and Khan's doing a slide lecture on the medical towers. He says, I want that building. And Khan says, you don't get that building. You get your building. <laughs> we have to go see the site. Well, Salk had acquired land uh, on the Pacific Ocean in La Jolla, which is just north of San Diego. And it's the most beautiful climate in the United States. It never goes, you know, like below 60 or above 80. And here's what they built. I think these are solar panels added later. And you go down, all oh, down, and there's the ocean. And then the ocean's right there. And then more recently, this was added. It's very controversial, you know, can we touch a con building? I had no problem with it because uh, it's, you know, it's far away from the building.
there's a grove of trees here and you tended to enter through this grove of trees and that's now gone. You don't enter that way anymore. But I never went in that way anyway. I always went in sideways anyway. So that's an overview. And he originally envisioned that there would be the laboratories, housing for the scientists, and what's called the meeting house. Now Salk said, I envision a new kind of science, a kind of science which is integrated with the arts and not separated from art. Art and science are both part of culture. And he said to Khan, and this is you know a fun gossipy thing, um, I want a building that I would be proud to invite Picasso to. Later he married one of Picasso's ex-wives. <laughs> The housing was probably a bad idea. Khan thinks very monastically. You know, we should be in a monastery and do serious science. We're serious whatever. People want a barbecue on Friday afternoon, Friday evening. Their kids want to ride their bikes up and down the street and play with the other kids in the cul-de-sac. You know, they don't want to live in a monastery out on a cliff over the ocean. Hey, some people, I might now that my age. You, you guys wouldn't. And the meeting house was a great idea. Conferences, meetings, symposiums, seminars, lectures. That would have been great. But the budget just was never there. Now, the laboratory is in two identical wings. And that's in part to keep it low. And he, he doesn't want a tower here. Uh, this is California. It's not... Philadelphia, and we're on on the Pacific Ocean, so we want to sort of blend in with the landscape. When you go there, anybody been there? Right here is where the hang gliders are, <laughs> jumping off the cliff. Here's an earlier version. Uh, here was the laboratory sort of based on the medical towers, housing, an early version of the meeting center. Um, we're going to see later when we look at it, I mentioned this before, Khan does not see things developmentally. In other words, a city planner would say, well, what part of the city happens first? Well, where first is the housing for the workers who are building the city. You know, and then you add this, and then you add that, and it grows. And Khan doesn't see it that way. He says, you can't do it in parts. So you can't, you know, have one arm and add another arm later. It, it's a whole. And so part of his whole is, you know, body, mind, spirit. And so here's a baseball diamond. There was a sports stadium in his redo of Philadelphia, right in the middle of downtown. You serve the, it's not something out there in the Meadowlands. It's an integral part of our uh, lives, the body. So uh, here's an almost final version. Here's the artist's housing. Here's the meeting house. The water would be right about here. And here, there's, there's two wings, and there are two of these. So there's four wings. And at the last minute, we're just about to start construction, Khan calls up Saul. He says, I don't think two wings is right, because you're going to have the A team and the B team. Oh, which one are you in? <laughs> you know? Oh, you're we, you're you're in the one with the with the losers. <laughs> oh, we're in the one that got got the Nobel Prize. You know what? So it just creates a psychology, and Salk agreed, and so they made it twice as tall, but only one set of those. Now they're still in two parts, but those two parts are unified by the courtyard. They're all on the same courtyard, rather than having another one of these over here. Now here's how it works. We have alternating lab floor, mechanical floor, lab floor, mechanical floor, lab mechanical, lab mechanical, lab mechanical. Now what he does is he's got columns here, and then he spans across with big verandels. Anybody tell me what a verandel is? A verandel is a truss without diagonals. So the structure works somewhat differently. We, that's an engineer's problem. But basically, a, a big truss, but there are no diagonals. These verandas, or trusses, are so deep 
that, and he puts a floor over here and a ceiling here, that you can walk around in here. And this is where the mechanical goes. So threaded through these holes are all the water pipes, air ducts, everything you need. So if you have a desk here and you say, I need chill water right here. The engineers go up in here, run the pipes and drop it right down through the ceiling from above your desk. This building is also you know, more than 50 years old and totally up to date because all they have to do is rip out all the mechanical and put in new. And because uh, the mechanical is going to go out of date. Uh, we always, you know, the compressors break down, the, they get better and more efficient, you need new kinds of stuff. You don't have to tear down the building to change them. Now, in these Verandales, can here's the column, cantilever out beyond the column. And that makes a walkway here. So the glass wall of the lab is here, and out there's an outside walkway. Oh, there was one more criticism of the medical towers. And that is, I showed you the centers for the lab desks and the perimeters for going to the window to work on your notes and the like. Well, the lab desks just went right up to the windows. <laughs> you know, you're always short on space. So that disappeared quick. So this is totally separate structures for the scientists' offices. So the lab cannot encroach on the scientist's space. So you go out of the lab, up a half a flight, and into your office here. And you've got to be pretty special to get an office. There's a limited number. Here is this, oh, by the way, this space is three times one of the pavilions in the medical towers. So it's what the scientists wanted, all three in one continuous. So he's answered that criticism. Here are the columns. See, bum, bum, bum. Here are the Verandale span across. Out here, bumping out here, this is a hole in the ground. This is these towers, these bumps. Those bumps have stairs, toilets, elevator. So that's the mechanical. Stairs, toilets, and elevators in these bumps. Over here are the offices. There's a, a walkway running all the way around, a floor-to-ceiling glass. This walkway creates an overhang. Here's the glass. This walkway is overhanging so that direct sunlight can't get into the laboratory. So three problems solved. Number one, the dust from the mechanical space. That's a separate room. It's got a floor. The dust isn't going to get through there. Number two, the light, the too much sun. He's got an overhang to protect you. Number three, bigger spaces. Here they are. Number four, the lab's encroaching on the scientist's office. They're in a separate building. The lab can't get there. You're going to see it's very similar in certain ways, but it answers all of those problems. So here is one two, three, four offices. This is, ang why is this angled? What's in this direction? You have view of the ocean, right. So it's angled to give everybody a view of the ocean. There's a walkway under here, so it's walkway, office, walkway, office. Here is, here we come out of the laboratory, through the glass door, onto the walkway, and then here there's a stair going up can't see it here, over this little bridge and up the stairs into my office. Now here's an earlier version where you had these, he loves these forms. We're going to talk about the great forms of Rome. And he loves the, how sexy these forms are. And these are precast beams to span across doing the job the Varendales did. And it turned out that um, you, you can get mechanical running back and forth this way, but you can't get, you can't go this way. So he abandoned that. We're going to see he's really turned on by Rome. He's really turned on by historical forms. So then he's not against Rome? Say again? So he's not against Rome? So what is it? Say clearly what is it? Is he against? Monumentality. Monumentality. Yeah. Well, a form isn't necessarily monumentality. 
sexy form is a sexy form. Uh, he makes a circular staircase, for example. It's just, it's cool. Have this big cylinder. Now, is that monumental or is it big? That's a good question. So let's pursue that when we get to, uh, when we talk about Rome. Keep that in mind. So here is, this is not a good plan because this is a glass wall, this is the key wall, and this is a notch in the ground where the fountain runs. And so, you know, I have to know the building, but if you don't, what's what? Like this is the tower, this is a light well. Looks like this is a form, it's not. So this is not a good drawing. Uh, and you can't read it unless you already know the building. So outside, here is these bumps. In here is stair, toilet, elevator. And here is, we can't see the glass. It's a little reflection here. Um, but here's the glass. So here's lab floor, mechanical floor, lab floor, mechanical floor, and two more below grade here. Here we go, here you can see the glass. Lab floor, mechanical floor, lab floor, mechanical floor. Now, this is the wall of the mechanical floor. This is parapet. This is the railing, solid railing, for the walkway. And he puts a notch here, and a notch here, and a notch here, and a notch here. Just see those notches. To tell you that, so you can see the daylight beyond, beyond them. Tell you this is not. Now, Frank Lloyd Wright had, had something similar, and he makes it all one wall the same. Where does Frank Lloyd Wright do that? Where we've got part of the wall is parapet, and part is covering the mechanical space. This looks like it's all one thing, this parapet wall. But from here, to, if you see somebody standing there, their feet are not down here. Their feet are up here. So from here to here, half of this is covering the space for the AC. The other half is parapet wall. Let's get another, here we go. So here you can see the vents for the AC. They run all along here. And so there's, there's AC ducts in here. And then, so what Khan would do is put a notch down as long as it's parapet and then solid below. So he tells you which is which. Wright is interested in integration. Kahn is interested in articulation, showing that this is this, that is that. Here? Yeah. Probably to get light in the staircase. It's been a while since I've been there, so it's probably for light in the, in the, light in the staircase or in the space. So you originally approach through this grove of trees from here to the water from here, the water is down here. So you approach through this grove of trees, and then there's this plaza, and then here are one, two, three, four offices. Here you see lab floor, mechanical floor, lab floor, mechanical floor. And <clears throat> the plaza, originally he showed it with trees. He had no idea what he was going to do. So he invited the Mexican landscape architect, Barrigan, to do the plaza. Bargain came and said, just leave it. Put paving down and leave it. No trees. It's a cathedral without a ceiling. Well, the plaza reflects the sky. So he has a fountain here with a band of water running down, then this big elaborate fountains down here. And then these are dry, but they fill up with water when it rains, which is not very often. One of the architects who worked on it um, is Carlos Enrique Volnrath, Argentinian, and he looks at it and says, what were we thinking with these benches? It's like it cuts off the building. <laughs> 
you know, sometimes you make a mistake. So these are the offices. You'll really see them. Now, this is all poured in place exposed concrete. He wouldn't, he wouldn't want to do that. He does, but not very often in the Northeast. Here you can do it because it never freezes. So the problem with concrete is water's going to get in there, freeze, expand, crack the concrete, chip the concrete. Never goes below 60 degrees in Ohio. It's not going not to freeze. Now this is teak wood. Teak is supposed to be indestructible. So you make, a, anybody ever been on a boat that has a teak wood deck? When you have teak wood on the deck of a boat, you don't even varnish it because the teak is tougher than varnish. Um, it's so tough. Um, but, oh, and it, you know, on a boat, standing up to salt water. What we're going to see is a problem. So it looks beautiful, the light teak here. And each of these is one, two, three, four offices. And then you can walk through here. And here is the Lab floor, mechanical floor. We're now the one that's below grade in the light room. And then we have this sort of bridge over to the, over to here. And then you take the um, stair up half a level. This does not comply to handicap. Uh, stair up half a level to one of the offices. So here we are in a lab. <coughs> Fortunately, I got there before they were all filled up. I've never seen this picture anywhere else, but I got one when I was there. It was one of the labs was empty. Floor to ceiling glass. Here we are on the walkway, seeing the floor to ceiling glass. Here's the walkway above, overhang, protecting it from the sun. And we can say that the glass is Mies and the concrete is Corbu. So Mies, Corbu, he wraps Corbu around Mies, is the way somebody put it once. Now here we are in the mechanical floor, and it's just solid with spaghetti. It's just filled with all the mechanical equipment. And if you have to change some of that, you don't, the science, the, the engineer doesn't have to, you know, put a ladder on the scientist's desk and climb up and work up there. Um, they, they work, you're down there, the scientist is down here, the engineer's up here, and you don't have to know what either or the other is doing. So here's the plaza referred to as a cathedral without a ceiling, a band of water running down. Now, in Hinduism, there's a notion of what's called the five sheaths that make up the self. The outer sheath is the body. Uh, and the body is dead meat. And you know, you can buy a steak in the grocery store. Next sheath is breath. And so the body's alive. But my cat's alive. Next sheath is human consciousness, which, you know, my cat doesn't have human consciousness. It just goes on. A, it's affectionate, but usually on hunting instincts. Play with me. <laughs> I want to chase something. Um, and then the next sheath is the spirit. Egyptian mummies were buried in five layers of sarcophagi. 
So if we look at Kahn's building, first we have those little towers on the outside with the stairs, toilets, and elevators addressing the body. Then we have the laboratories for the activity of the mind. Then we have those walkways that surround the laboratories and lead to the offices. I didn't show you one, but on those walkways, he has embedded into the concrete blackboards, the little shelves for chalk. This is kind of, <laughs> it's so romantic, you know. The scientists might not be able to walk more than 15 feet without having to write an equation on a blackboard. Uh, so this is where you bump into other scientists and exchange ideas. Then next is the offices for the scientists. This is where you take your observations and render them into a theory. That's a cultural act. That's where you, what you did, presumably, and the perimeter of, of the glass and the medical towers. And finally is the plaza in the center that addresses the spirit. So here we have a mandala of body, mind, society, culture, spirit. Five layers of a human self represented by this book. This is not Kant's, this is mine. So I think I'm right, but don't say Kant said this because he didn't. Now, wrapping up. Actually, we have something yet interesting to do. So, everybody okay to stay to five? Okay, we're good. Okay, I'm supposed to get out at quarter of or something. But remember the parts of this building: the laboratories for measurement, the space at the windows for the scientists to go to the light, the mechanical stairs and air ducts in these, and then the shared mechanical spaces where the air handling, toilets, and stuff like that is. This building, it's the same building. Here's the laboratory space for the measurable stuff. Uh, here's our big spans across it to keep the columns out of it. Here uh, is the space where the scientist goes to the light to work on their theories. Here is the mechanical stairs to, oh, I got that wrong. It should be these guys, these are the light ones. Don't tell me about it. Uh, here's all the shared mechanical stuff. Here's where all the, the compressors are and the heaters and everything that then send the stuff down the mechanical space. The, Every part of this building is reflected in this building. Kahn uses the terms form and design. Form means the underlying conceptual order. Design means the shape. These buildings have the same form, totally different design. One is two stories, one is seven stories. One is three stories, one is seven stories. Um, so, totally different shapes, but what Kahn means by design is not the design of the building. He means the underlying conceptual order. These buildings share an underlying conceptual order, but totally different shapes. Hang on. Form and design. Form is the underlying conceptual order. Design is the shape. Sorry about that. So here is, uh, among con types, the greatest never built building of modern architecture, uh, the Salk Meeting House. And we'll talk more about con and light, but remember the disaster of the light in medical towers. So here he's got a wall with glass in it, the round. Then the square is another wall with big cutouts, but no glass. So the light comes in, bounces back and forth, and then goes through the glass indirectly. 
So this is like a light shield and allows a bounce back and forth between the two. And he's playing with form. Sometimes the outer is square, the inner is round. Sometimes the inner is square, the outer is round. There's no right or wrong. He's just enjoying playing with these great forms. And this is going to have a meeting house, an auditorium, beautiful models of all these things I've built since. There was just a big con exhibit ended a couple of weeks ago in um, Philadelphia, traveled the world. And they had in their beautiful models of this. And, um, and now, about more than 10 years ago, somebody made computer 3D models of the meeting house and a, and a bunch of, uh, actually several unbuilt con buildings. And I think uh, today this software's gotten so much better. This, we thought this looked pretty realistic at the time, but I think today it would look even better. Anybody uh, done the goggles? Virtual reality? Who's done virtual reality? Okay, um, I work on a project called Timeship, which is a uh, next generation cryonics facility. So we have uh, 800 acres in Texas and we're building multi million dollar. Uh, our clients intend to be more. It's the hell with this death stuff. They're going to find genetic cause of aging and turn it off. And if they don't make it in time, they'll be frozen. So we're building the research facility and the freezing facility. So uh, we now have the whole building <laughs> in goggles in virtual reality. We built it in a gaming engine. So you could like move around it, but on the computer screen. But now you can put the goggles on and go walking through the whole thing. <laughs> uh, but I went to see, what's today, Tuesday, two days ago. Uh, no, yesterday, Monday. I went to see a movie, uh, Phantom Thread, or, and it's in Kipps Bay, 2nd Avenue and 32nd Street. And the whole lobby is um, virtual reality um, gaming center. So you want to come in for 10 minutes and shoot robots? <laughs> so anyway, this guy created uh, Khan's Unbuilt Buildings, you know, you know, stills in a book. But now, uh, I don't know if anyone's done it yet, but sooner or later someone will do it so you can walk around the buildings. Now, one more thing. Buildings will last forever. I, uh, one of the buildings we'll see shortly is uh, Exeter. It's uh, had a major... Uh, renovation. Uh, I spent a day with the engineers. But here, this just, they're just starting on SOC. These guys are all in bad shape. And, uh, and then you get a what to do about it. Uh, if you're into automobiles, do you, this, the, people wanted to make them as perfect as possible. You know, like you have a, I had a 1955 Cadillac, uh, Eldorado convertible. Uh, but if you have a 1938 Packard, you know, one of the great cars. And so the temptation is to make everything super perfect, and this beautiful paint and everything. But then there is a feeling that's called over-restoration. The paint you put on there shouldn't be any better than they had in 1938. Uh, this is not a 19, 2018 car, it's a 1938 car. And then what's really valuable now, it gets, you know, two, three times as much money, is a car that's in Decent shape that's never been restored. So it's totally original. Original paint. If you can get, if you have the original, I, got, I immediately replace my tires. I'm not riding on bias ply tires. I need radial tires. So the car will stop. <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, if you have original tires, original paint, in good shape, uh, people love that. So what to do? Do we want to rip out the teak and put in new teak that looks like this? Or do we clean up this teak? And so there are people uh, working on that. Uh, and so restoration is a, is a really big field. 
Now I'm going to spend just a few minutes uh, to help you think about what this means. So everybody knows this about it. Centre Pompidou, or Pompidou Center, Piano and Rogers. Right when it got finished, uh, Rogers came here and talked about it. So it's in Paris, it's a competition, they won, and it was initially very controversial, and people hated it, and now it's, uh, they get three million tourists a year just riding the escalator. But it is a bitch to keep up, because look at all the stuff you have to keep repainting. But people make a comparison to what in terms of its being a beloved building? The Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower was hated when it was built. What, what are they sticking this raw iron frame in the middle of the city for? This is Paris. And now it's, you know, the symbol of Paris. So, <coughs> uh, this side is the mechanical. The other side is the tubes, horizontal escalator, horizontal escalator taking you up. Uh, most of the people just go up here and look at the view of Paris from here. They don't even go in. Ah, museum. And then eat, I don't know what they are, but the blue, red, and green color coating tells you whether it's air, water, intake, outtake, whatever the mechanical is. But you can imagine what a bitch it is to paint this stuff. So here's the other side. Uh, and people just love riding up this thing. Now, this is a walkway. It's hanging outside the building. Here's the columns. And, the, and then the trusses cantilever out, carry the walkway. Sound familiar? Here we are inside, no ceiling underneath, but giant trusses spanning huge spans from column to column, open flexible space. So, column, column, truss, cantilevering out, containing the mechanical, or the walkway. So, column, span, column, cantilevering out, holding up the mechanical, cantilevering out, holding up the walkway. I don't want to take anything away from Piano Rogers, but what we have here is salt in steel. <laughs> Same building, but in steel. Doesn't have the offices. Here's another view, column, Column, huge span, cantilever out, and holding up the walkways. So, uh, this building was pretty exciting during construction. Everybody, well, the architects in the world were following it. So, here's our vertical columns. Here's our truss. This is called a gerbil. Drop side, gerbilette. Now, this cantilever is now pulled down, and that pulling down bulges up the truss and helps it make that span. And so this is cable is in tension, and there's a monster concrete block buried in the ground here, pulling down on that. So column, column, truss, con for con, this truss is concrete and a verandah, which means no diagonals. Here it's steel and diagonals. Now, I'll tell you something right now. Well, I'll get to it in a sec. Well, let's go back here. Um, what's your nagging structures or mechanical teacher going to complain about in this picture? Where's your fireproofing? This is not the structure. There's structures inside there, 
Then there's an outer sheath, and there's water in between. And the water won't put out the fire, but the water will carry the heat of the fire away. And it's, it's got, it needs a certain hour rating. In other words, eventually this will overheat and collapse, but it'll take four hours. So that's how long it takes to get everybody out of the building. So you need a certain hour fire rating. It's got to be X hours, whatever's considered necessary to get people out of that building. So this does have their own fireproof, but they want it to keep it looking sexy. They want to see steel and not a bunch of sprayed on mineral fiber. So here is the truss coming in. Trusses were made in Germany, uh, no French contractor bid, and um, here is the gerbilette, the hinge here, and then pull down. This is like assembling a giant Lego block on Rector's. Here, the, they had to close the streets at night to bring in, the, because of the size of the uh, beams, the trusses. And they, they, they quick painted over the German company's logos. <laughs> because the, the French wouldn't get teed off. So this is a big hinge here, pin going through, and this pulls down. There it is. So we can see on the side column, truss, column, cantilevering out, containing all the mechanical, cantilevering out, holding the walkways. And here's people taking the ride up <laughs> just for the view over Paris. It's Notre Dame. And the same story about the Eiffel Tower. All the artists and intellectuals wrote letters saying it was the most horrible thing ever, and now it's totally beloved. And Pompidou is very popular, too. Only complaint is the maintenance staff having to do that painting. But they get something like five or ten times as many people visiting as it was supposed to be designed for. So there's a lot more wear on the building than had been planned for. So there's only one of, you know, this is a, related to one of these, and this does not have the offices. There's a plan, saw, saw column, column, Cantilever, cantilever, column, and where's the column? Here. Column, no, to here. Cantilever. Here it is. Column, span across, cantilever out. Column, Spin across, cantilever out. And then this does not have these guys. Okay, any questions? Someone get the lights, please. So we had a lot to do today, so we ran a little long, but uh, just for a minute. Any questions or thoughts? So, Khan is very into how to put a building together. That how to put a building together has to have a architectural intent. In other words, he has a philosophical point. His philosophy is expressed in how the building's put together. So how the building's put together isn't just, oh, uh, 
we're doing it efficiently for engineering reasons to make it cheaper. These aren't cheaper. <laughs> uh, he's doing it, the aesthetic expression comes from how he puts the building together. Now, what does he mean by aesthetic expression? We'll be getting to that. But to say, I'm going to make, you know, uh, Maya was a very big computer rendering program 20 years ago. And everybody was, and it's, it's Hollywood software, uh, Hollywood special effects software. So everybody made these buildings. Then you went and found an engineer, maybe, maybe, maybe not, could figure out how to make it stand up. Well, how it stands, it's like saying, I've got this great idea. Could you do the words? <laughs> Let's do a novel. I've got this idea, maybe you could do the easy part, stick the words in. No, the words is, is the novel. <laughs> you make your novel through the words. You make your building not through, you know, some software effect. You make your building through how it's put together. And how it's put together has to be saying something, otherwise you're just an engineer making warehouses. Um, so that's what we'll talk about as we go forward with Kong. See you next week.